Hey what's up everyone, welcome to Effects Maniac, this is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri again and welcome to another really cool tutorial where I'll show you guys how to morph uh, from one object to another object using Tyflow. So it is going to be a cool one and make sure to uh, watch it till the end and enjoy. But before you do, uh, if you like my content and you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to click on the subscribe button and click on the bell and turn the notifications to all so that you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. Alright, so uh, let's see here. Let's go into 3 Studio Max. This is basically our result. So we have this number 2 here and then it is just morphing to number 3. It can be any object, it can be a car, a human, a bottle, anything, alright? So normally you would use something like Phoenix FD for this type of stuff, but I'm just going to show you guys very quickly how to do it inside of Tyflow. Alright, so I'm just going to take the time measure and delete it. And initially the idea for this tutorial started as basically, you know, filling an object with particles and uh, you know kind of morphing it to another object which in itself is really cool and you know I was going to do it initially but then I thought you know let, let's just do it like a mesh morphing thing so uh, yeah let's get started with this so I'm just going to go and create a new scene so I'm going to reset this don't save yes and by the way to show you the results from the you know the the, the sphere the simple particle effect in itself it's also looking really cool and uh, you know you can do this and you know I'll show you both so uh, let's go into 3d studio max uh, let's create our object so it can be any object uh, I'm just gonna go maybe I'll go and add a an extended primitive like a torus knot right let's do like different objects so just move it up and to hide the selection bracket in 3ds max 2021 or above you just hit shift j and it'll hide it and uh, let's create our second object which this will morph into so i'm just going to create the good old teapot and just uh, you know you can move it aside or it can be on the same spot it depends on you however you want it and the other thing i'm going to create is the initial emitter for the particles where they're going to get birth and move into the the one of these shapes all right so just create a sphere right off the frame so now i'm just going to go and create my tie flow so I just go ahead and create and it's a very very simple effect so if i go just here i can go and uh, i'm going to add a birth operator so i want to birth it onto the sphere and make sure it is set to 0 to 0 and I'm gonna add a position object so hit tab and position object pick this object so we have our particles here but we do want a lot of particles for so for stars I'm just gonna turn it up to 2000 and just give it like a shape so I've used like three shapes so for the first one I'm just gonna use a cube and display geometry and for the second one I'm just gonna go and add a new and I'm just gonna add a, a chunk chunks round and I'll add the last one and that'll be a um, you know geosphere mid res so we have three types of particles and now I'm just gonna add a very simple find target operator so just uh, find target pick the initial shape that you want the particles to go into so now you can see that the particles are actually going into that object and if I kind of hide this uh, you can see that the, it's going but they're not really like going into the shape of the object so what we can do is set the uh, objects uh, target location to random and set the point also to random so now you can see that the particles are actually going into the random spots of this object and the other thing I'm going to add is I want to I want this uh, these particles to collide with the object so I'm just going to tab and add a collision so bring it down here most of this uh, is a uh, very similar to the last tutorial I did the type flow particle attraction so you can go ahead and check that one out for more basic info so I'm just going to go back here and add this object here but then I want to set the collision radius to shape radius so it'll be more accurate but then there is one slight problem 
All right, I'm just going to go into time configuration and make sure real time is off. And I'm going to set my frame length to 500. All right. So there is there is a very simple, uh, there's a problem, but then I've just found a very simple solution to it. All right. So uh, I want, of course, I want these particles to collide with each other as well. So I'm just going to add a particle physics for this very quickly. And, uh, you know, in this case, um, there's a, there's a problem with the particle physics as well, so I'm just going to shape, uh, turn the collision radius to shape radius. Uh, the problem with the particle physics is that you can see some particles are still penetrating through each other. Uh, that's why if I go into the draw collision shapes, you can see that the collision shapes are spheres basically. So if your object is in a sphere, it's it's very it's very fine and it'll kind of collide with each other properly. But if it is a cube or any other shape it'll be it will not because the shape is not like you know confined to that object it will not basically collide with each other properly but then since it is a very you know this effect is like we have too many particles it won't be so much noticeable but if you want to have real particle collisions like very accurate you can use the physics shape operator as well so you can add that but in this case I'm just gonna go with particle physics and turn off the um, draw collision shape and turn off the process only this event uh, because if this is on the particles are only collide with this event and if you have the particles to go through another events it won't really calculate but then if you turn this off it'll basically calculate for all these events uh, if you have more events in the future which we surely will so um, yeah so this is basically the effect and sometimes it happens that the particles, if I increase the number of them to like 6,000, they won't be distributed evenly on the surface. In this case, it's fine, but if you have like a number, it won't be distributed. So in that case, you should go to the collision, and there is a very interesting parameter, which I found it by, uh, you know, just playing around. It's called pass-through. You want to make sure to set it to 100%. So it'll basically sort of you know make the particles uh, kind of distribute evenly in this case it did if I hide the selection you can see that it is actually working beautifully so yeah if you're getting some areas of your object is getting less particles and some areas are getting more make sure to set this to 100% all right and now that our first object is settled down you can you can play around with the find target you can turn on this ease, so if I turn it up to like 30%, the particles will just sort of ease into place, so, you know, they won't be that random. All right, and uh, now I want to sort of change it to another object, so um, I'm just going to add a, like, hit tab and add a time test, so after like a few frames, maybe after frame 160, so set this to frame and I'm just gonna set the value to 160 so after frame 160 they are I want them to change to that other shape that teapot so I'm just gonna unhide by name teapot and I'm gonna add hit tab at another fine target or just basically kind of you can you can shift drag this one to duplicate it and add and also the display so just shift drag and make sure that the object is set to the teapot and just link it to this one. Oh, sorry, my bad. I accidentally, uh, you know, connected the find target to this event, the find target. We need to connect the time test, actually. So my bad. Sorry for that. So now the objects are there settle down and after frame 60 they are going to turn into the you know the teapot all right so that is that is looking pretty cool and uh, that is basically it and you can go as much as you want you can go and add another time test and you know do the whole thing you know and add another object but in this case I'm just going to be using so you can do it as much as you want but in this case I'm just going to do two objects and it, that in itself is a very cool effect you know you can you can see that you know they are sort of you know and the other thing I forgot is to add a rotation of course to make them more random 
because now they look a little flat. Now they're looking pretty cool. All right. So yeah. And that in itself is a very beautiful effect. But now uh, I will show you guys uh, how to turn this into a mesh using Time Mesher. So I'm just going to go and go to Tie Flow, Time Mesher, and just pick the Tie Flow. Now you can see that they are sort of you know, turning into those shapes, which already is looking really nice. Um, but there are some settings that we need to tweak in the time measure, so I'm just going to turn down this to maybe like 3.5 and turn down the voxel size to 1, so that is going to make it much more uh, smaller. But then the very important thing here is the voxel filtering, which we're going to set it to Gaussian. So yeah, that is basically the effect. And if you want this to be filled, so you can you can go ahead and increase the number of particles to make it look more filled. But in this case, I think it is fine. And you can see that they are sort of going through some weird and actually organic movements to turn from one object to another. And if you want to fill these holes again, you can go ahead and increase the number of particles. So yeah. And the uh, other thing that I did was like, you know, in the in the last scene, if I show you guys, so I'm just going to go into morph, don't save this. And that scene, I basically used like, you know, some text. And I've added some lights here. So I've added like a plane, I've added one light from here and one light from there. And I added sort of a sphere backlight. And uh, you know, that is uh, how it is looking, you know, it's looking pretty cool and um, very easy simple effect to do with tie flow so again this is the final result so you can go um, it's very suitable for the text um, but for you know heavy objects you, you do need to increase the poly uh, sorry the particle count so this was the today's tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you learned something from it and if you did it would mean a lot to me if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel my main channel text maniac and my music channel which is audio aura so it's fairly new and i need you guys support so uh just you know if you need any type of music you know royalty free no copyright music for your videos this is the place to go and you know enjoy our music and you can also follow my instagram pages both for audio aura and effects which i get which is my personal sort of page of my works so uh this was the today's tutorial i hope you enjoyed it until the next one, enjoy working!